Hi, it's time for a chime video. And today, we're going to start off on the whiteboard to explain some things, and then we're going to move on to real life stuff because that's always more interesting. So I had a conversation with a fella named Mark recently. He sent in his new tone eight note door chime bass to have it serviced. And along with it, he included a do-it-yourself wiring diagram of how he thought he could install the new tone eight note chime with a secondary two note doorbell. Mark apparently has a really, really, really big single story house. And in the back of the house, you can't hear the eight note chime ring, which is in the entryway. His wiring diagram includes things like two push buttons, two transformers, and a lot of wires trying to connect everything together. Please ignore the scribbles in pen because that was me making little drawings and scribbles when I'm talking to him on the phone. I told him that there is a much, much simpler way to achieve what he wants to achieve because fortunately, new tone eight note door chime bases have a provision already designed into them to do exactly what he wants. On the whiteboard is a drawing that represents how a new tone eight note chime base is installed and wired up. And down here is going to be Mark's two note doorbell, which is going to be down at the end of the hallway in the other end of the house. Now, I'm not going to go through all of this wiring specifically because we have another video, which is actually one of our most popular videos for door chimes that goes through how and why an eight note chime gets wired up like this. And I'm not going to repeat myself and make that video all over again, but there will be one of those pop-up things right up here somewhere that will take you to that video. And then you can watch that in greater detail. That also is a video that features Harvey as a supervisor during the video. So it's well worth watching people like Harvey. He's always very interesting. So very, very briefly, here is the new tone chime base. This is the motor. This is the terminal strip where the, all the screws for all the wires get connected. These are the four solenoids that strike the brass tubes. In this installation, we have a front door push button and a side door push button. And over here we have the low voltage transformer that powers the chime. The way this wires very briefly is the two wires that come from the transformer go directly to the chime base. One wire is connected to common. The other wire is connected to trans. And then from the front push button, those two wires go up. One is connected to common since it's a common terminal and the other wire is connected to the front terminal and that will make it ring its eight notes. And then the side push button wires one wire up to the side button and the other wire up to the common button. So you have one wire on front, three wires on com, one wire on trans, and one wire on side. The side door ring on a new tone chime is a single note. It only strikes one tube. This is the volume control. It's not relevant to what we're really talking about. I just put it there to identify it. it adjust how hard the plungers strike the tubes. So let's get into Mark's question. How do I make my two note doorbell in down at the end of the hallway at the other end of the house? How do I make it ring when this one is activated? And it's actually fairly simple. So this represents a standard two note mechanical doorbell power unit. You have the solenoid assembly is the square. You have three screw terminals on it, R for rear, T for transformer, F for front. A cautionary note, do not oil. Don't oil the plungers, it'll ruin them. And here we see the two different plungers. This would be the rear door plunger, and this would be the front door plunger with different styles of tips. And of course they have little springs around the metal plungers to make them pop up and down as they should. On the new tone eight note chime base, up here at the top, is a screw terminal that rarely ever, ever, ever gets used. It says it's labeled as EXT front. And what does that mean? That means EXT means external and it's an external front door connection. Now it's not where you connect the button, it's where you actually can connect a secondary chime that will be activated when the eight note chime base is turned on. New tone eight note chime bases had an external front connection starting all the way back in 1947. 
So it's always been something that they've included in their designs. I believe it was for convenience. It probably was also somewhat of a marketing idea because it enabled you to have multiple eight note long tube chimes in your house. So of course you're gonna buy two or three of them, aren't you? You're gonna spread them all over the place and that way you can hear it wherever you live. You know, if you live in one of those really big turn of the century or 1920s mansion kind of houses, if you got three or four levels, which is not uncommon. Uh, we just came back from a trip to Savannah, Georgia, where every single house has a full-on basement and two or maybe three floors above that. So in a really big house like that, and we're talking houses that have 12 and 14 foot ceilings. So they're big voluminous houses. And you probably need more than one doorbell because otherwise you're not gonna hear it everywhere. But back to the matter at hand. How do we get Mark's two note doorbell at the end of the hallway to ring when the eight note chime base is activated and it's actually relatively simple. We're going to use the yellow marker because when we set this up in real life in a minute or two we're going to use yellow wires and that way it's easy to follow. So it's actually very simple. The EXT terminal on the eight note chime base needs to be wired to the front door terminal of the two note chime. So all you have to do is run a wire from the EXT chime base through the walls, through the attic, through the basement, wherever it needs to go to get there. And it goes down and it connects to the screw that says F for front. Now we need to get power to this because this is basically just a switching leg. So we need to get power from it. And where we're gonna get power from it is from the trans terminal, the transformer terminal off the eight note chime base. And again, you're gonna run a yellow wire from that screw down and down and down and connect it onto the screw that says T for transformer. Since Mark has two push buttons, he has a front door push button and a side door push button, we need to run one more wire to the rear terminal of the two note chime. And in this case, we're going to connect it to the same side terminal on the eight note chime base that the side push button is connected to. You run another yellow wire and you connect it to the screw that says R. Now, some of you might be, be like, well, but if this is the rear door chime terminal, how come it's not connected to the rear terminal on the eight note chime base? Well, it's not because there's no push button connected to this. It has to be connected to a connection that has a push button as part of the circuit. Since Newtone eight note chime bases ring one note for the side door and a different single note for the rear door, it doesn't really matter. This side button could be connected to the rear screw and then you would run the yellow wire from the rear screw to the rear screw here. It doesn't really make any difference. I suppose it's personal preference of which note you like the best, but in most applications, people don't even know and it doesn't really matter. So how does this actually work? Now that we have it all wired up in Mark's house, when a visitor comes to the front door and pushes the front door push button, it's gonna activate the motor in the eight note chime base and it's gonna begin ringing through its eight note Westminster sequence, but it's also going to make a connection through the EXT front terminal and it's gonna go down to here and it's gonna make the two note chime go ding dong. When someone comes to the side door and pushes the button, since the side door is a single note, the eight note chime base will ring its single note and the two note chime down at the end of the hallway is also gonna go ding. And that's the way it works. It's very simple. The eight note chime base becomes the controlling chime for an ever larger chime system. You can expand this idea if you wanted to. You certainly could have more than one two note chime. Maybe you have one of those really giant 25,000 square foot, two, three story houses with a full on basement and you really need more than one or two doorbells. Maybe you need one on every level, certainly down in the basement because otherwise how are the servants gonna hear you? You can also copy this and have more chimes throughout it. One of the things to keep in mind if you do that is it has to do with the size of your transformer. Transformers have two ratings. They have their voltage rating and their wattage rating. So the voltage has to be correct for whatever your equipment is. Since Mark's eight note chime base is from the 
late 1980s. It's a modern chime bass, as is the tune-up doorbell. So these are both 16 volt devices. Volt, like that. But one of the things you have to consider is the wattage. The wattage is the amount of power that the transformer can create. So you can think of wattage in terms of a light bulb. If you have a four watt light bulb, that's a night light that you put in your bathroom. If you have a hundred watt light bulb, that's the light you put in your reading lamp next to your chair in the den. The more watts, the more power because a four watt light bulb is a little bit of light and a 100 watt light bulb is a great amount of light. Every device connected to the transformer is gonna use up some of those watts. If you have a super small transformer, say it's only 10 watts or maybe 15 watts, it's not really going to be enough because the motor uses up some of the watts, the solenoids use up a lot of the watts, in Mark's case, he actually has a chime with accent lights. There are four little light bulbs, which you'll see. Each one of those light bulbs use up a little bit of watts. And now you're adding in another door chime with solenoids with electromagnetic coils, and they want some watts also. So if you only have 10 watts or 15 watts, you're gonna run out of watts really fast. So we don't want 10 and we don't want 15. Ideally, what you want is at a minimum, you want 30 watts because 30 watts is a lot of watts and everybody can use up the amount of watts that they want and you're not gonna run out so things aren't gonna work poorly or in some cases, especially in an eight note chime base with a motor, if you run out of watts, the motor may stall out and the chime won't continue through its sequence and that's very bad. That is the whiteboard concept drawing of how you wire up a new tone eight note chime base with an extension two note doorbell down at the end of your hallway or down in the basement or wherever it is you wanna put it. Now let's move the whiteboard out of the way and let's do it in real life to show you how it actually works. So this is actually Mark's LD49 door chime base, the one he sent to me that I serviced and now it works well. So let's go ahead and turn power on to it and you can see the accent lights light up. There's four of them across the front. And what you wanna watch for are where the plungers pop out of the solenoids, which is here, 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 and here. I have it wired up exactly as I described in the first part of the video. We have the red and black wires, which are the wires from the transformer, and we have the gray and white wires, which are from the push button. Now, I did not yet hook up a rear door button. We'll do that, or a side door button, I guess. We'll do that in a second. So we'll go ahead and push this, watch the plungers. And that works exactly as it's supposed to. One of the things that you may notice is if you watch the light bulbs very carefully, when I push the button, ready, set, go, You'll notice that as each plunger strikes, the brightness of the bulb dims down a little bit. Why is that so? It's so because my bench power supply, my AC transformer power supply that I use when I work on things like doorbells, it doesn't really have enough watts. It could have more watts for what we're doing. And if I was really, really being conscientious about all of this, I would take a new tone 30 watt transformer and wire it up on a cord and do all of that. But to be honest with you, I don't need to do that because it's not that important. But this is what happens. It's a real life example of what happens when you start running low on watts. Something's gotta give somewhere and the, the thing that you can most likely notice is the light bulbs become dimmer. So let me go ahead and change this around and we'll see if we can incorporate a two note doorbell into this and make it all work. So now I have modified the installation to copy the drawing on the whiteboard. Our new tone eight note chime base is still wired up as it was, but you'll notice now we have our three yellow wires. One yellow wire is connected to the EXT front terminal up here, and it goes down to the front terminal on the two note door chime. The other yellow wire, the second one, is connected to trans and it goes to the transformer terminal on the two note chime. And the third yellow wire is connected to side and it goes down to 
what would be the rear door terminal on the two note door chime. I've also added a second button. We now have a rear or side door button, however you want to call it. It's connected to the side terminal, so it's technically it's a side door button. First, we'll ring the eight note front door and watch how it works. And watch the plungers because they're still going to operate as they did before. Pushing the button. And there you have it. You saw that the chime rang its eight note Westminster sequence and it also activated the two note chime two times. And you may wonder, why did it do that? Well, because the way these chimes are designed, it's actually half and half. It, the way the circuit board is designed, it runs the first four notes through one set of contacts and then moves on to the second set of contacts for the last four notes. And each time it does that, there is a moment when the EXT front is activated and that's what makes this ring again. So one more time. And if you think about it, it's actually advantageous for it to operate that way because if you go back to Mark's really, really, really big two-story house where the eight-note chime is in the entryway and the two-note chime is going to be down at the end of the hallway, probably near the bedrooms, the eight-note chime is long. It's eight-note. It rings for almost... 10 or 11, 12 seconds, something like that altogether. So not only is it a beautiful sounding chime, but it also rings for a long time. So it gives you a good opportunity to hear it. If you're down in the bedroom wing of the house, it's advantageous to have the two note chime ring two times because it doubles the amount of time that you have a chance to actually hear it. So I think that should work out fine. Now we'll go ahead and press the button for the side door and you'll get a single note here and a single note here. So you can see the plunger pops out here and you get a single note here. That's how you wire up an existing new tone eight note Westminster chime bass to power an auxiliary two note door chime. I hope you found this interesting and perhaps for someone it will be helpful. It probably will be for Mark because he's looking forward to putting all this back together. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up because that helps us just a little bit. There'll be a banner right here that shows you how to subscribe. Go to our YouTube homepage, click on the bell, and when you click on the bell, click on it to receive all notifications. And every time we post a new video, you'll get a notification and you can watch it. That's all for today. See you on the next video.